but I don't go easy on him just because he has Down syndrome. Although I do know his limits and I do know where I need to, um, you know, not to have my expectations so high. So I feel like I'm a realist as well with my son. In this episode, let's talk about the superpower of joy. I have on with me Wendy L. Hooten, and we're going to talk about her son, Matthew, who has Down syndrome and the joy in their lives that she gets to share in her stories and in her videos. And why not talk about the superpower of joy? Wendy, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good, Maureen. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. We're thrilled to have you. I love the preliminary chapter I got to read as we're leaning into the book coming in 2023. Let's get into, first of all, the piece that Matt's superpower is bringing joy and happiness to others. Okay, great. I, I love talking about my son. When he was young, when he was born, I just kind of started calling him Super Matt. And I, as, throughout his life, I've just uh, realized the powers that he has are superhero like powers. And, you know, just I've got a chapter in my book. So my book has uh, each chapter is a story in itself. So this chapter that we're talking about right now is the superpower qualities that I have found in my son throughout the 32 years that I've had been raising him. It's just we get to stop, be present and see what's in front of us. That we all have our superpowers. We just don't always look or take the time to look, right? Right, right. And his powers, he doesn't even know he has them. You know, like there's a part in the chapter where I talk about his um, Hulk-like strength. And, and when I mention that, I mean he has the strength to lift others when they need to be lifted. So it may not be physical strength, but it's his, his just ability to lift others when they need it. And he's just in tune. He's in tune to what's going on in your life. He can sense when you need that lifting. So, so that's kind of what I've done in that chapter is just taken a, a superhero and the ability that he has that is associated with that superhero, I just call it out. And it seems that his presence just brings that out in others as well. Uh, yes, that is correct. I, absolutely. He. So Matt is down syndrome, right? Let's get into when you first found out and the internal struggle that you had because Matt was going to be a little different than the average child. Right. So when I had Matt, I was young. I was only 23 and it was an unexpected diagnosis and we were surprised. And, um, you know, because I was young and naive, I didn't know anything about Down syndrome and what I did know. Um, honestly, I didn't want that for my baby. I didn't want it for me. And so the emotions that came with his birth were, I was all over the place. You know, I was sad one minute. I was angry one minute. I was, um, I felt guilty for being sad and angry because this baby was beautiful and he was mine. And so I realized, you know, within a matter of hours or, you know, a couple of days that there was no changing what, what we were dealing with. I had to change my mindset. It was now about me learning how to help this baby grow in the world. And so uh, obviously we've had, it's not been an easy life at all times, um, but what happened is I just realized, you know what, this, these emotions, I wasn't the only one dealing with them. So, but I didn't know that. And, and now that he's older and I'm older, I see these new parents going through the same thing, having the same experiences. And it takes me back to that moment. And then I'm in my present moment and I have 32 years of joy that are just busting out of me, right? And so I just want to share that with these families. So that's why I was inspired to write my book. I'm being real in my book. I'm being raw. Um, but I want to help them know that they're not isolated, that they're not alone, and, and that there are people out there who can help them through the shock and trauma that they may be feeling. And I want to, them to know about the joy that they're in for. 
the life, the peace, the happiness. You're shifting the narrative or you're bringing the narrative forward because that shifting, it means that it's supposed to shift from something else instead of beauty exactly of what it is. Again, go back to Matt's superpower, bringing joy to others. That's who and what he is. And that's what makes him special. Okay, we're having parents are out there, right? And there's a lot of different ways that we can talk about this because we get the spectrum now, right? You have kids that have ADHD, you have Asperger's, you have autism, you have children that just are introverted. And, and there's just so much of, it's difficult for kids and people are hurting at this point, how things have changed so rapidly with social media and so any of that, any of that, what would you say to a parent that's worried about their kid? That's, you know, saying that, is there something wrong with my kid? And instead of this is who my kid is, so I get to meet them where they are. So, you know, it's interesting that you brought all that up because when I initially started this journey, my audience that I was intending to do this for was new parents of children with Down syndrome. But through the journey, I realized, wow, there's a bigger audience out there that can benefit from this. And, you know, I think just to be real, um, to be honest, it is hard, but you're not alone. And that's, that's the one thing that I just want people to know that I still have my days where I find myself in the laundry room crying because I don't know how to handle a situation. Um, and I find myself having to get creative with how to, you know, handle a situation that has come up. And so it still happens for me, but I know I'm not alone. And I know that there's joy around the corner. And I know that, you know, there's a whole, there's a whole community of us out there. And it's just about reaching out and being open to, um, you know, finding that community and, and using them for support. And that's the one good thing about social media is that there are a lot more resources to support than there were when I first had my son. I didn't have the support that's out there right now. And I love that you get to stand in your courage and you're bringing this forward. But, you know, you were talking about standing out your audience. I mean, who is your audiences? And then who is this for? That standing in the laundry room crying because you're not reaching your child. I don't know any parent who does not feel that at some point or multiple points, that in itself, but you get to allow us to bring forward and say, this is my child's gift. This is my child's gift to the world. And that makes it all and brings joy and this like the humor in the book the love the joy this brings us all back to a place that we all are as parents as we struggle because there's no manual that's right and i've had plenty of my friends when i'm sharing stories like uh i don't know what how to handle this you know, they tell me, well, you're no different than me. I had to deal with the same situation. So then it's a reality for me that, oh, you know, our children are really more alike than different. You know, it's just, um, we just have different circumstances. So it, it's, it's definitely, I will say I've had an amazing support system. And I will say that when I am standing in the laundry room crying, it's not long before I turn around and my son's standing behind me, you know, singing to Queen. So, you know, I, you're not, I'm not allowed to be in that moment for very long because of the joy and the super qualities that he does exhibit. He just brings me back to, um, it, it's just, it, he makes it easy to come out of that. He brings you back to those higher energies because he doesn't let you stay down in despair and whatever that is that's in our head. Right. It's not his. Right. You're right. That's so true. The show is always about bringing people forward. So let's take this that parents who are frustrated with how to 
bring their child forward? How was the first day of school? How so afraid were you? What was coming up for you and how did Matt handle it? So, you know, I, through this entire process, I've come up with this sort of tagline, healing, hope, and humor. And healing from the beginning, you know, to healing through the initial diagnosis, and you're still healing throughout his life, but then hope, you know, I hope my son's going to have a good life. I hope he's going to fit in. I hope he's going to have friends. I hope he's going to be invited to dances. I hope he's going to drive. I hope he's going to marry a, a life of hope. And those hopes are still out there. And then humor, obviously the humor plays into all of that. Um, but there's that fear, you know, letting loose. Let, I, I didn't want to send my child to kindergarten. I wanted to keep him into the early in, intervention program that he was involved in so that, because I knew it was safe and I knew the people there were safe, but I had to cut those apron strings and I had to trust the people, uh, you know, that were going to be leading him on into the next part of his journey. And I needed to let him experience being around other children. And so you know, the one thing I just have to say is we're, we're their voice. And so you have to stay strong and be that voice. So uh, when you, when you do find something in the school system that you don't agree with, or, or if you would like more, more of their needs met, you know, don't be afraid to, to um, speak up, to, to share what you, uh, they deserve an education, just like any other child. And so a lot of the roadblocks I ran into were against, you know, the school system, the system itself, um, and the wants I wanted for my child, because I had hopes and dreams for him, and he couldn't meet those without his education. So um, I, you know, just, just don't give up. You, it's hard. It's, I assume it's just like every other child when you're setting them free first day of junior high, first day of high school, first day of college. Yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, those emotions are real for any parent, but again, you have a community of support who is there to help you through each process. And so that's, that's what how I dealt with the school system and letting him go for each of his firsts. All right, let me ask you a question then. How do you navigate? And I believe a lot of parents are feeling this, and then I would think it would be amplified, the supporting them, but also holding them high meaning you let them fall because only when they fall can they figure it out versus wrapping them up in bubble wrap. How did you navigate between those two? So with me, Matt is my only child. And so I don't know, I didn't know how to treat him any differently. So I think I've treated him like I would have any other child. Um, I've had high expectations and at times I've been told my expectations are too high. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with striving for goals. What I would do is I, I would tell the teachers what my expectations were. And then I would, we would work together on a, a curriculum that worked for him at school and at home. So like I had homework come home, you know, I have helped him be the best he can be in all aspects of his life. I've never babied Matt. That, that's what I was trying to say. I've never given him a free pass because he has an extra chromosome. And I actually have a chapter about that in my book. Um, at times I may have been a little bit harder on him for those, um, because I've had those expectations and it's been from love. You know, I just want him to succeed and to be the best he can be. And so I don't go easy on him just because he has Down syndrome. Although I do know his limits and I do know where I need to, um, you know, not to have my expectations so high. So I feel like I'm a realist as well with my son. I need to hang out with you more. Uh, so tell us when it comes to, and this is why you're starting the group. When If you're going to say to being a parent who has a Down syndrome child, three things three things so first you talked about don't do it alone get community which is one of the life lessons that 
um, is so important. Two other things that you would say so really enabled you to move forward with everything and be at this place where you're ready to give to others. Two, two life lessons. The first thing I would say is just remember they're from birth, they're a baby first, they're a child first, they're a person first. Don't let their diagnosis define them. Um, love them. You know, there's so many emotions that may be going through your head at all phases of their life. Um, love them. You know, just remember they're, they're, they're people first. And, um, and then the second they're one. They're your I child think, first. So right, that's where right. the love comes. Okay. Yes. Yes, exactly. And then sometimes the professionals think they know the best for your child. And that's not always true. Um, sometimes the professionals, and, and I don't mean this in any disrespectful way, but sometimes they were our um, deterrent. You know, they held us back. You know, your child can't do this. Your child won't do this. And again, your expectations are too high. Um, don't let anybody else, you know your child more than anybody else does. So don't let them set limitations. You know, my son has done things I never thought he would do. And I, I've been one that hasn't set limitations. I can't is not allowed in our home until we've actually tried it and we know we can't. And sometimes I have to remind myself that because I'll find myself saying, I can't do this. I can't do that. And then I'm like, well, you're a hypocrite. You know, we don't allow that with Matt. So, um, but I've always pushed him to do what he can do. And then once we know it's too much or that he literally can't do it, then we don't do it. So, so that would be my, my second thing is don't let anybody else set limitations for your child. You know, if you want them to go to college, if you want them to, to get a black belt in karate, if you want them to be a cheerleader, if you want them to get married, shoot for those goals. Sometimes you do have to shift them a little bit. I mean, I had goals that we had to change, but um, he, he, he does more than I thought he would ever do. And so what I'm hearing you say is you get to be an advocate for your child, just like you get to be an advocate for yourself. And that changes everything because you know more than others because you're the frontline person. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And I do call myself a, a Down syndrome advocate because I have spent 32 years advocating for my son and for others like him, you know, when I've had to go to bat in school meetings and, and stuff, you know, I, I can't, I could never speak for each child, but I could, could use my voice to say, well, this isn't fair. Why, why can't they have this? Or, or why can't we do that? Or here's a better way to make this work for them. So yeah, that, that's, that's, I'm, I'm an advocate all the way. <laughs> Okay, I love this. Obviously, being here, you're going to be with your show, with the upcoming book, an advocate of joy, love, and humor that you get to bring forward as you develop this community for others. Is Matt someone that will be guesting on the show? I hope so. <laughs> well, I have plans with him. Uh, after this book is done, he and I are going to co-author I hope a little series, you know, of books. And he's excited to do that with me. We've got some um, other plans that we're kind of working on with him, you know, little business opportunities. But yeah, when I get up and going, I definitely he's going to be a guest. He's a big part of our, my story. So in fact, he's my main character. So I, he's he's got to be the star. He is the star of the show. So I've got to introduce the star of the show. Okay, I love this. Again, everybody, it's Wendy L. Hooten. The website, easy peasy, wendylhooten.com. And also um, the links below and reach out. And uh, Wendy, let's put up a free gift for them so they can get in touch with you. Um, can we put the chapter up as a free gift or one of the chapters? <laughs> yes okay. yes okay everybody we get to have a free gift the gift will be below the free gift is grab the chapter it's the chapter that i got to read as i can't wait for the rest of the book 
and um Matt's superpower and um oh and it just begins here again everybody Wendy L Hooten free gift down below the link and then you get to get in on uh Wendy's email list and start seeing what's coming forward as we move into this new exciting chapter all right everyone I'll see you soon bye